All right, we are going to show you Wolf Point, where the three branches of the Chicago River come together. Here we are on a, on a boat in the Chicago River. This is Captain Jessica. She's actually our producer, but she's doing double duty here, driving the boat for us. And here we are at Wolf Point. This is where the three branches of the Chicago River come together. So let's get oriented. Look around, see if you can find the main branch of the Chicago River. We'll mark that for you when you've found it. That goes out to Lake Michigan from here. Uh, and now look around, see if you can find the south branch of the Chicago River. I'll give you a hint, it's actually behind me, if you can find me. Uh, so the south branch flows all the way down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, if you turn around, you can see the north branch of the Chicago River, which flows from the North Shore suburbs in Chicago. Wolf Point, where these three branches come together, was sort of the hub of the early frontier Chicago. We're talking the early 1800s. There was a tavern on each bank of the river here. Look around and see if you can find each of those taverns. We'll mark them for you. Uh, there was actually a ferry boat, so you could bar hop. The most important of the three taverns was over my right shoulder. That was the Sauganash Hotel. Um, it was run by a, uh, an innkeeper named Marc Bobian who had 23 children by two wives. He used to say, I play the fiddle like the devil and I keeps hotel like hell. And Bobian uh, hosted uh, the whole town of Chicago uh, on, on various uh, warm summer nights. I love to picture this. Maybe all 70 of those early Chicagoans would come down here to Wolf Point and they'd crack open the casks of whiskey and um, Bobian would jam on his fiddle, maybe with a, another frontier settler, uh, a John Kinsey, and the Native Americans and French Canadians would dance the night away. This confluence of the river was so important here that actually it gave rise to Chicago's logo. If you're from Chicago, you've probably seen it. It's a circle with a Y in it. That Y represents the three branches of the Chicago River. A lot of Chicagoans don't even know that. Uh, and the other great thing about being right here where we are right now is that uh, since the river has always, always been configured that way or this way, you can sort of see the archaeological remains of the earlier Chicago's that were here. We already mentioned the frontier Chicago. That disappeared uh, in the early 1800s and was replaced by a 19th century industrial boom town. Look around and see if you can find a, a big steel railroad bridge. Um, I'm pointing to it right now. It's, uh, it's, it's always in the up position. It's not used anymore, but it reminds us of the days when this was an industrial river. There were railroad lines here. In fact, Chicago's first railroad terminal was here. We'll mark that for you. If you look around, you can find it. It was the terminal of the Galena and Chicago Union Railroad, built by Chicago's first mayor, William B. Ogden. And actually, that didn't actually ever get as far as Galena, um, but it ushered in the era of Chicago as the railroad capital of America. And there's an old cold storage warehouse along the river that you can see if you look around for it. It's been rehabbed by Harry Weiss, architect Harry Weiss, into condominiums. Uh, the river was lined with docks and wharves and jammed with schooners and canal boats. It was pretty filthy. That was the, the I like to call it the second Chicago, after the frontier Chicago, the industrial Chicago. That burned to the ground on October 8, 1871, and out of the ashes rose 20th century commercial Chicago, the world's first city of skyscrapers. And we can see uh, evidence of that around here too. There's the beautiful green glass curving 333 West Wacker Drive by Cohen, Peterson and Fox, a New York architecture firm built in the 1980s. It curves with the curve in the river and it's green to reflect the greenish color of the river. And a couple of newer buildings uh, behind me where I'm standing right now along the west bank of the river. Um, this one right behind me is, is called River Point. Um, and you'll notice that, that the buildings on the west bank are actually built up, up above uh, the, the level of the river. There's a park at the base of the building, but it's, it's one level above the river. And that's because on the west bank of the river are still active railroad lines. So these buildings have to be built in some way either above or between the railroad tracks. A great example of that is, is this building at the mouth of the, uh, at the beginning of the south branch there, that is 150 North Riverside by Getch Partners. 
completed in 2017. And look at that, it's like a pencil standing on its point. And that's because there wasn't much area at the base of the building uh, because of the railroad tracks. So they have a narrow base of the building get in between the tracks and then it widens out as the building soars up towards the sky. And the last thing I want to show you is our new river walk in Chicago. Um, this is made possible because these new passages have been built underneath the bridges. So you can now walk at river level under all the Chicago bridges, all the way from here at Wolf Point, all the way to the lakefront of Chicago. So you think of our, our prairie river and then our industrial river. Well, now it's a 21st century river lined with uh, restaurants and bars, fishing piers, a splash pad for the kids, uh, places to dock your, your pontoon boat or, or your kayak. Our, our old river has been livened up and brought to life for the 21st century.